Welcome in, welcome in to another video. Today we're just going to be going over three players in each round of the NFL draft that could help the Chargers win a Super Bowl in 2023, technically. So we're looking for, I mean, players to help with positions of need, possibly. Players with, a couple players with just huge ceilings who might slip might get drafted in the middle rounds later rounds but who have huge upside and if they hit could help the chargers win a super bowl um but number one on this list is i'm just gonna be pulling up um the names on the draft network and just go through the player profile so that you guys can look at it while i briefly talk about each player but number one Mr. Jameson Williams, 6'1 and a half, 180, transfer from Ohio State, true deep threat for this offense. The trio of Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Jameson Williams would be one of the best in the NFL, and when you're building a basketball team, that's what you want it to look like. Mike Williams, big jump ball guy who's progressed a lot in terms of his route running, intermediate, shorter routes as well. Um, pretty decent after the catch as well. Keenan Allen, your inside-outside guy, insane route runner, one of the best route runners in the NFL, third down weapon just because if you see that it's man, Keenan Allen's one-on-one, -on -one, you know he's probably going to get open. Combined with Jameson Williams, just the true... I mean, great release, doesn't really struggle with press. Um, could work on being a little bit more of a hands catcher rather than body catcher, but that's a small issue um, because he didn't have a huge issue with drops in college, but just elite, elite speed. Um, he's not the Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle type of quick in terms of just immediate acceleration in any direction. But he accelerates through those middle gears still pretty quick. And once he reaches that top speed, nobody's going to touch him. Next, I personally have Trent McDuffie because the versatility that a guy like Trent McDuffie would bring to this defense I've already been hearing some reports on how Brand Staley or the Chargers might be a little bit lower on Michael Davis and not even view him as a CB2, in which case if they feel like they need to upgrade in that area, they might covet a guy like Trent McDuffie. He has very good ath or very good athleticism, very good agility. Um, some inside outside versatility as well could kick into the slot could honestly play at safety with his athleticism and his um, willingness to tackle and just his aggressive nature kind of. But between his versatility, he's great in coverage as well. Very, very sticky. Better than Kyler Gordon at the catch point, which is one of the bigger things that's kind of putting him above Kyler Gordon in this whole draft process. Um... But a guy like Trent McDuffie could provide the depth that we need at cornerback, as well as if Brand Staley and the Chargers don't think that Michael Davis should, they want him starting in base packages, then maybe they go J.C. Jackson, Trent McDuffie, and Asante Samuel. And then the next player is a player who I would be okay with at 17, but I would rather trade back into the late first round and get Bernard Raymond. He's almost certainly going to go in the first. If he slips into the second, that would be a steal for whoever gets him. He is a used to be a tight end. He's from Australia, I want to say. Does it say it in here? I don't know. Um but very, very good in pass protection this last year. He has, I, I want to say, barely sub 33-inch arms. I could be wrong about that. I think he cleared the 33-inch arm mark. But very good in pass protection. Very, very good athlete. 
going to be, I think, a better tackle day one than Trevor Penning as well. As well as if you have Rashawn Slater and uh, Bernard Raymond as your tackles, you have one of the most athletic tackle pairings in the NFL. And for how much we pass, I think Bernard Raymond could possibly make it by pretty early in the NFL. Um, Zion Johnson is another guy who I'm pretty high on. Could, in a pinch, play tackle, I think. He just, Zion Johnson is just so good. If we trade back in the first, Zion Johnson is another guy, um, another name to keep your eye on who could help the Chargers win a Super Bowl. Next guy, Travis Jones in the second round. This dude just blew up the senior bowl. Um, he last played at UConn, I want to say, but just a true nose tackle. I like, he had a pretty good combine. He didn't blow it up like um, Jordan Davis did. But if you're getting this guy on day two, already has some decent pass rush moves. Very, very good nose tackle against the run. Yeah, one tech. Uh, nose tackle, I think getting him on day two would just provide the depth that we need. We have um, Sebastian Joseph Day, we got Austin Johnson, we brought back, brought back Christian Covington, we have Jerry Tillery, but Jerry Tillery, I don't want him there on um, really first downs, just any possible rundowns and true obvious passing situations then yeah get your artillery in there but Travis Jones bringing some youth and some run stuffing ability with some pass rush upside to this defense would do wonders in the second if he falls there to us in the second and we don't have a second round pick right now which most of you guys might know um but if we traded back into the late 20s, maybe the 30s, or like 31 or 32 in the first round, then we could maybe squeak out that team's second round pick, or we can always trade up into the second round, which I don't know how much I would love unless we traded back. So my personal vote is that we trade back um, Sky Moore. He's going to be very productive very early in the NFL. Great release package, huge hands, long arms, but he is, he's 5'10", but he can definitely survive on the outside. Very good hands, uh, good route. I mean, start. this has him as a starting slot receiver. Do they have any player comps for him? Yeah, very good release package. He's Decent after the catch, good ball skills, football IQ. Sterling Shepard. That's not that's not a bad comp, I would say. Um, but he has plus athleticism as well. And if we added him in the second round, it would kind of just provide a buffer to where even if he didn't start for us day one, if any of our receivers go down, you have it's not going to be a massive drop-off to some guy off the practice squad. Because right now, our wide receiver room doesn't have that much depth. We have a solid four guys that I can think of, I think. Um, but adding a guy like Sky Moore would just kind of guarantee that even if we make a deep postseason run with some injuries we can still just have another guy up who can contribute be productive get open which is insanely valuable in the nfl third guy in the second round that i'm going to highlight is cameron thomas biggest thing about him is that he has slight inside outside versatility he could come in and be our edge three if um, bosa or mac needs a breather on early downs but on um third downs obvious passing situations he has the size and the ability to 
yeah, although he's front versatile. So he has the ability to kick in. So we could have Jerry Tillery, Sebastian Joseph Day, and um, Cameron Thomas alongside Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, if that's the front that we went with. Um, but that would just be an insane front. Very versatile. George Karloftis I like in the first round um, for a reason similar to this. Obviously, he has a little bit more power and a little bit more upside than Cameron Thomas. But I, I think Cameron Thomas would just provide us with that possible edge three, but also just depth along that uh, defensive line. Getting into the third round. And I used a sort of composite big board just to try and see where the majority of people were at on these guys but i would take zach tom in the third round uh versatile offensive lineman pff just highlighted him as the offensive lineman with the best mirroring ability and i think mike renner said that he wanted to try him out at tackle or like keep him at tackle kind of, but good athlete. He shut down Jermaine Johnson as well. I think he only had like eight reps against him in their game against Florida State, but he allowed zero pressures against a, a guy that some people have going in the top 10. Um, this just has him as an academic standout versatile reserve, but I would feel pretty good about him starting day one. Whenever balance is the first thing, that's a very good thing that you want to see in an offensive lineman. Moving on, we have in the third round, Troy Anderson out of Montana State. This is the guy who played quarterback and then running back and then moved to the defensive side of the ball for Montana State, he is just an absurd, yeah, most versatile player in the 2022 NFL draft. He is an incredible athlete to start with. Very high IQ, which you can see, and I think he would be okay year one, but I think what he could provide is, once again, the versatility that Brand Staley is looking for. So this year, that's what he would bring in a pinch. He can play a lot of different positions with his athleticism and IQ. But especially looking two, three years down the road, what this guy could develop into is scary. Um, given that he played quarterback like two years ago, I think. And then the last player in the third round is going to be Calvin Austin. He's kind of been shooting up draft boards. I could see him going anywhere. Honestly, I would be surprised if he didn't get drafted at least by the third round, possibly the second. He's been shooting up uh, draft boards ever since the combine. And honestly, the senior bowl. He had a very good senior bowl. This is a possibly the closest thing to Tyreek Hill in the draft. Um, obviously not actually close to Tyreek Hill, but just in terms of that 0 to 100 stop and start in any direction ability while still having a pretty decent top speed. Um, I think he ran a 4-3-2, but very good after the catch as well. Pretty tough to bring down. Does need to work on overall route running as well as like catching outside of his frame kind of but Calvin Austin could really move the needle doesn't necessarily even need to be a gadgety guy um day one in the NFL but if we could add Calvin Austin in the third round depending on how our first two rounds went that would be steal move the needle a lot for this offense next we have in the fourth round luke gadecki the other central michigan offensive tackle he would probably um kick inside to guard 
depth yeah depth option on the interior with the ability to kick outside in an emergency but he just yes at central michigan you're not gonna face the best talent but renard ryman probably going to go in the first round luke Kadecki isn't that big of a step behind him he's most definitely a step behind him in terms of athleticism but in terms of pretty decent polish yeah worst game studied lsu i that was an ugly game i'm pretty sure coach o's son plays for central michigan he was their quarterback and we just obliterate he dude i think we had like 10 sacks or something watch the highlights of that game that was not that much fun that wow not that much fun of a game to be at I don't know if I'm saying that right. Not that much. Not that fun of a game to be at. I'm having a stroke. I don't know what. Not that fun of a game to be at. But watching the highlights, we just obliterated their offensive line and got pressure almost instantly every single play. So I can see how that would be his worst game graded. But in terms of for sure depth, to play multiple positions along the offensive line, as well as possibly starting right guard for us, possibly left guard if Matt Filer kicks out. I would like Luke Gadecki. Next, we have Zion McCollum. For one reason and one reason only, I don't know if he's 6'4". I don't think he is. But this dude had... One of the freakiest combines I've ever seen. One of the freakiest combines anybody has ever seen. Not many people had even heard of him. I for sure hadn't. But I'm trying to think if they're going to. No, they're not going to put his uh, combine and all of those stats in here. But raw speed. Short shuttle, or I guess 40, short shuttle, three cone, vertical, broad, everything. Zion McCollum blew it up. If you're shooting for ceiling, this guy has number one corner in the NFL type potential. Very, pretty low floor though, I'll say. Floor is like, if he knows what he's doing and can develop into the NFL speed of the game kind of mentally then he could be pretty good but if he hits that ceiling number one corner in the nfl just because of how unbelievably athletic he is and then this guy i don't know if he was getting first round hype but definitely was used to be a lock to go in the second round at least before he showed up to the combine at 220 or something but i think he was just sick i want to say he put on more weight for the cincinnati pro day but if he falls into the fourth round which a lot of people have him falling into the fourth he would be a steal i would be okay with him as our edge three possibly edge four i guess we're probably not going to address edge in free agency anymore we might, we still have some cash, but I would I would be okay with him as edge three, and especially in the fourth, we need that edge three filled if it hasn't been filled already. And a guy like Maji Sanders in the fourth, that would be a steal. And just sort of once again provide that buffer from injuries. Like if a guy goes down, we're not going to take I mean, we're going to take a pretty big step back just because that would probably mean that Khalil Mack or Joey Bosa got hurt, and that would not be good for this team. Next guy, Damien Pierce, running back. I know. Running back before the seventh round, I know. But if Damien Pierce is here in the fifth round, I wouldn't hate it. Very complimentary to Austin Eckler. Um monster in pass protection which is a very little part of actually playing running back but just high character very aggressive 
very athletic, as well as a very willing NFL player, if that makes sense. Just watch the pass protection rep in the senior bowl. And he just, he loves contact. And between the tackles, that's kind of what we need to complement Austin Eckler. Um, I would be core their car bro is Cordero flat not on this board I guess I'm just gonna talk about him so Cordero flat the corner out of my LSU just they just had their pro day if he was there in the fifth I would be okay with him as cornerback four he probably wouldn't um, take over Michael Davis's role, at least in year one, I would be pretty surprised if he did. Um, but very good coverage skills plus athlete. It looked like he added some weight to his frame, which is really the only thing I was concerned about. I definitely passed him and you guys probably saw me pass him. Yeah. But that's okay. What am I... There's no way they just don't have them. Core. It's not like KO. Flot. Core. I might just be blind. This is not good video content. Unless they just don't have them. But Cordero Flott, definitely an LSU uh, draft eligible corner who, if we got in the fifth, I would feel good about being cornerback for good all around skill set. He was our starting corner CB1 for a while because Derek Stingley just couldn't stay healthy these last two years. And he produced, he looked good. Um, him in the fifth would be. I mean, I like him as a cornerback four, but if we could get him as a cornerback five or something, that would just be elite depth at one of the most valuable positions in the NFL. And Brand Staley, we've heard him talk about DBs recently. We know that he covets um, cornerbacks specifically and safeties, Derwin James, just versatility between the two. The last guy in the fifth round is Jack Sanborn. Consistent, but he tested out very, very good um, at the Combine and at their Pro Day. Him and who's the other Wisconsin linebacker? Leo Chanel are both freaky athletes. Wisconsin just had, yeah, some very good athletic blitzing linebackers um you kind of want to see him with qual yeah so you kind of want to see him with some good coverage guys behind him just because he's not necessarily there yet in, in terms of coverage but right now we need we need some guys at linebacker and at least getting a high-end athlete to play within Brand, uh, Brand Staley's scheme because we know Brand Staley doesn't really value linebackers, but Jack Sanborn in the fifth might be the depth, might be the guy that he is looking for. Matt, see, I know that they had him. All right, well, Matt Ariza is the first guy in round six who I think could help the Chargers win a Super Bowl next year. And, I mean, once you get into the fifth, six, day three guys, it's not going to be guys who can move the needle a whole lot. But Matt Ariza, clear punter one in this draft just has a monster leg on him um and i don't really think we have we signed somebody but we don't really have any guys 
for our punter, we let go of Ty Long. And being able to flip the field, I've explained this in other videos, but I don't think we need a guy who has great hang time. On his punts, I think we need a guy who can just flip the field and we'll have to rely on our punt coverage. But if we're at like our own 40, close to the 50, we're going for it every single time. And that's normally where you want those shorter, long hang time punts so that you can get there and down it before it goes into the end zone. But we're only going to be punting if we're on our own like 30 yards and in and sometimes we're still going for it so if that's when we're punting we just need a guy who can fucking boot it and then yeah try and hold up in coverage because we haven't been great at that recently but hopefully with a new special teams unit basically overall um those issues will be resolved next we have mr okay so it's just bugging because there's definitely a guy named Jason Poe. He is six feet tall, a guard out of Mercer, but he is built like a bowling ball and he is just crazy on the move. Um, some draft scouts, some guys in the NFL draft community have been talking about him as a uh, fullback converted from guard just because him on the move is such a such a sight to see just there's not much tape of him but just seeing him pull and just obliterate guys on the move is very very fun so I don't know probably not a day one starter guy but for some depth for some highlight real plays um as well as possibly a fullback convert we do still have um justin herbert's old roommate why can't i remember his name i can't remember his name i don't know he was in one of the chargers like trivia shows or whatever but jason poe guard out of mercer in the sixth round would be a guy who can help us win a super bowl Yes, the bar is much lower on day three. Neil Farrell, really just, yeah, rotational interior pass rush lineman. Um, really just rotational interior offensive, not offensive lineman, defensive lineman. I like what we've done with the D-line so far, but we do still need a little bit of depth. And a guy with some experience um, who's produced... Yeah, he has, as they say here, he'll need to improve his overall strength because he he got moved a little bit in the run game, but nothing you can't improve upon. Anybody coming out of the draft, there's still stuff that they need to work on and their bodies are still developing. He is a little bit, they don't have his date of birth, but... Yeah, he's a senior, so it's not like he's 20 years old coming out. But if we could get him in the sixth round, I think, I mean, rotational interior D lineman, that is still, for depth at least, that's still a pretty big need for the Chargers. And then I want to say, so Percy Butler, safety out of Louisiana, PFF has him ranked much, much, much higher than 300. They have him, I want to say, in the sixth or fifth round. And addressing the safety position, at least for depth, I've, I'm have i definitely not low on Elohi Gilman or Mark Webb. I would be okay if either one of those guys, uh, if either one was able to get onto the field in some packages, um, or if like Nazir went down that somebody could step up into that role, but I'm also a fan of just adding, sorry, I have like a hair on my face, but I can't get it. I can't feel it. Um, Percy Butler in the seventh though would be 
another depth guy to where if we possibly want to keep that too high shell look that we love to play, that Brand Staley loves to play, Nazir, a guy like Percy Butler, or Alohi Gilman to allow Derwin James to play more in the box closer to the line of scrimmage so that we don't need Derwin and Nazir to play back there. Um, I think that could provide some value to this defense. And then Sincere McCormick out of UTSA running back. He was productive. I mean, seventh round, give me the just the best running back available, really, because we are still, I think, looking for that running back two behind Austin Eckler if we don't get a guy earlier in the draft or sign anybody else in free agency. Um, but a guy who's produced, a guy who you know, can just come in and be reliable. And in the seventh round, you can't have huge expectations in terms of athleticism, but I'm okay with a running back by committee and adding Sincere McCormick, who we haven't seen in the NFL, so might come in and be better than Joshua Kelly and um, kid out of Mizzou, Larry Roundtree from last year which is a pretty low bar, so might be likely. And then last but not least, they don't even have him on here. Yeah, they don't. Cade York out of LSU, seventh round. I could see him getting drafted earlier than this, but I just couldn't find any information on where he was ranked on most people's boards. But Cade York in the seventh, Dude just drills kicks, and he has a great leg as well. Um, I like Dustin Hopkins. I know that we just signed him to a deal, but if Dustin Hopkins is struggling at all, I wouldn't hesitate that much to just throw Cade York in there. He definitely has a better leg than uh, Dustin Hopkins, and he was very consistent for LSU. I mean, I hope Dustin Hopkins works out. He was pretty decent for the Chargers, um, and Chargers have obviously struggled to find a kicker for a very long time, but Cade York in the seventh, that would kind of complete the overhaul with Matt Ariza, Cade York, the new long snapper as well that we signed, that would complete the overhaul of the special teams unit, but that is going to do it for this video. That was three guys in each round in, of the NFL draft who could help the Chargers win a Super Bowl in 2023 so next season um I hope that you guys enjoyed it leave a comment about who is your favorite guy favorite value from of the three guys that I listed in each round I think there's a lot of different draft strategies that the Chargers could have in this upcoming draft. I might make a video just about that in terms of draft strategy in general for the NFL. I think talking about tiers of players doesn't really, it's not discussed enough because I think that's a huge part of possibly what the NFL actually does. But I think more people should talk about it in that way. Um, but like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. And at 200 subscribers, I think I'm at 196 right now. I don't know why I just checked my watch to see how many subscribers I had. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.